uh, they are easily convinced to make the steps. But once they are in, they are happy, they start seeing the result, their energy levels are high, is making sure we recover properly before we have the workout. A difficult pillar is nutrition. I like to differentiate between personal training and personal coaching. And then pillar three is where the action happens. Okay. Very, very important. Otherwise they would uh, fall back, start looking into the strategy. What is now the strategy? Hi, Riyad. Welcome to our channel. It's Thank the you. Big Human Performance. Thank this you. is our first podcast. We uh, wanted to discuss about the three PPs, like what is it and uh, how did you create it? All right. The, the three pillar principle is a holistic system, uh, which is containing pillar one recovery, okay. including sleep and stress management, pillar two nutrition, applying a preventive approach and pillar three training, applying an athletic approach. So how I created it is when I started uh, coaching, I saw that the weak link very often, uh, it's actually not training. Okay. It's rather recovery, specifically sleep. Okay. So hence I started taking care about sleep first. And then of course, to the training, we would always look into nutrition. And so slowly, step by step, I developed this system in order also to explain it to my clients. Uh, how can I explain to them in, 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 in a manner which is very easy to understand and they understand me, how I can help them at, uh, achieve their, their results. COVID time has even confirmed uh, the need for such a holistic system. Oh, yeah, we sure. cannot really, let's say, train someone to an athletic level kind of style of, of training if they are not sleeping properly. If sleep sure. is short, is interrupted, uh, is of poor quality, then you cannot train someone 100% that they should be really be trained, uh, especially applying a, an athletic uh, approach, approach. To, uh, to coaching. No? So especially with color it with, the, let's say, the, the, the polyquin style, which is like one of the best performance uh, coaching styles worldwide, if not the best. To me, the system is very precise in terms of loading, in terms of design of the parameters for the, the, the coaching, in terms of uh, execution of the exercises and so on and so forth. Uh, and then if someone is not uh, sleeping properly, uh, then basically we will not see, we will not be able to coach them right way with the right intensity. We would need always to back off from, from intensity and, sure. and, and uh, uh, lower the intensity volume and then the results will not be uh, yeah so yeah, basically true. i mean uh, fixing the sleep is kind of making the first uh, step of being disciplined about some stuff yes and probably it's the it's the easiest to start with but it's difficult for a lot of people to fix like the first yeah. thing to do yeah so it is a good uh, approach uh, but is there any like one of the pillars that's more important than the other I mean, maybe people would focus more on the nutrition after doing the fixing their sleep or? Yeah. Okay. I, I think it depends really uh, from uh, person to person. There are clients who are where the, their sleep is pretty good. Uh, maybe stress management is not optimized. Then we help them to identify their main stressors and, and give them techniques on how they, they can uh, reduce uh, the stressors or the, the exposure to stressors and or put themselves in a, in a situation which is, let's say, uh, better for them in terms of uh, stress. Um, it depends really. So uh, other people, uh, their weaklings are rather the nutrition. I would say very often nutrition part is the part which is more difficult to uh, apply and comply with because it's uh, about psychologically Maybe you are, someone is indulging in carbohydrate or certain uh, practices of food and, and uh, intake and so on and so forth and telling them now to cut the carbohydrate. And we know how happy the carbohydrate yeah. may, uh, may, <laughs> may, uh, may make someone. So it's very tough on some people. So hence, uh, we would need to apply tools to help them bridge the gap and sustain this period of uh, cutting the carbs and being in ketosis, etc. Very, very important. Otherwise, they would uh, fall back and regress in terms of, uh, let's say, in, in terms of nutrition. I, I would say 
I remember Charles as well was. Uh, I, I asked him that question regarding whether which which pillar is 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 uh, more important. I think the most difficult one, maybe for the majority of people, is uh, nutrition, nutrition because it needs an active decision not to yeah. uh, grab to the cookie, not to grab to exactly, whatever. Yeah, yeah. yeah, the sleep uh, pillar is very important, and that's for me the foundation of any health transformation. But I think when you really help people uh, to identify the weak link with uh, with sleep, right, and then once they fix that uh, weak link, uh, and they see the health benefits, how much energy they have uh, during the day when they have an amazing uh, quality of uh, sleep the night before, uh, they are easily convinced to make the steps, and yeah. then also sleep. Uh, is a, sed a sedentary uh, activity. So basically, yeah. of course, you have to take the steps and switch off the light early and, and put away your phone, etc., yeah, etc. Et But once you are asleep, you are asleep. Yeah. So it's not, um, it doesn't have really that deep psychological fight because uh, between you and your, exactly, yeah. uh, in, in, yeah. in a dog to uh, say, okay, uh, not the cookie today or yeah, not the true. ice cream. It's like 15 minutes decision. Like you decide that you should yes. go to bed and then after 15 15 minutes you're done you are into it already. exactly once yeah. you are into it uh, you can dream about yeah. uh, waking up yeah, early exactly. or going uh, later to bed or whatever yeah. uh, but then the, the 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 day after you will feel uh, energized and that will convince you to take care really about oh, sleep. Yeah. Yeah. yeah 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 so uh training yes so some people are of course training and they are at a, let's say a relatively higher level others are less and and then uh, it's about the right exposure to resistance training so i apply an athletic approach athletic approach means sensing where the people are and then picking them up and then exposing them without over exposure uh, neither under exposure no one has time to uh, waste reps and sets and yeah, sessions yeah, yeah. so <laughs> And then slowly, we say usually within two weeks, we are efficient, means we are efficient with the, with the weights we are working uh, with. If we are doing 10 reps, then we are selecting a, a weight for 10 yeah. or 9 or 11 reps, but not uh, for 18 reps, so efficient with the weights. And and usually training, it's it's rather where the action happen. Uh, I rarely had difficulties to motivate people to, uh, to train. Okay, so to re reply to your question, I would say the most difficult penalty is nutrition okay okay uh, and again it's about having the right tools to to support the client bridge the gap so yeah. the most dangerous time here is when they cut the carbs uh, until they are in ketosis that's a very uh, dangerous uh, we had, uh, dangerous waters yeah. uh, but once they are in they are happy they start seeing the result the energy levels are high the cognitive function is good and then um, yeah so uh, they, they are in safer waters or safe waters right so uh, sleep may need uh, for sure focus and, and, and dedication and so on and so forth especially during the weekends yeah. So what I what we saw uh, or see with clients, especially people who are working in an office, they are obliged to wake up early during the week, uh, and then during the weekend they try to yeah, true. Like maybe stay oh. stay up till late, and then uh, exactly now you will have less time of sleep. Exactly. And then the next day you will wake up tired. And yes. maybe on a Monday, you will wake up pretty early. Yes. Having yes. six hours of sleep, which is not enough because you are used to eight now. Exactly. Which ruins the whole pattern. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, this is what I personally call the sleep waving during the week. Uh, and that's uh, something which is kind of uh, like a jet lag, which yeah, you yeah, yeah. always True. reproduce a uh, cycle yeah. uh, and so on and so forth. I, I find it very detrimental. Uh, uh, and I think uh, one of the techniques out of the our book, uh, Stress Less, Sleep Better, is to keep uh, the timing going to bed and waking up throughout the week the same. Yeah. 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 So the hormonal profile, the circadian rhythm, cortisol profile, testosterone profile, and you name it, melatonin, etc. Uh, it's we, we give, let's say, kind of consistent use of the body or we are better synchronized with okay. the bright dark cycle. So our circadian rhythm, which is uh, basically the cortisol profile throughout uh, the day is synchronized with the bright dark cycle. So yeah. we wake up at the same time, we uh, go to sleep at the same time. The hormonal profile uh, is not uh, too challenged. So it's yeah, exactly. Yeah. 
there is also another technique maybe worth mentioning here uh something i call the surfing on a cortisol curve okay. uh and uh, if we uh, think about the circadian rhythm we have uh, the highest cortisol secretion is around 8 a.m usually okay um, and then uh, the lowest is uh, uh, around 2 a.m during okay. night time yeah. right so we need high cortisol in early morning to kick off uh, into so the then, day yeah. we have energy and release uh, sugar into the bloodstream and so on and so forth and that's where we should be scheduling higher demanding tasks okay okay yeah, that makes so sense. Uh, and uh, toward uh, noon time and after noon time it's uh, a period where we start uh, reducing maybe uh, into uh, lower demanding tasks uh let's say if uh, we have a an important decision a labor a manual labor bigger or demanding task we should put them early morning and then in the evening or toward the pm time uh going to lower demanding task or task where we uh, work just by ourselves and so on and yeah. so forth yeah and uh, like this we synchronize or we surf on a, literally on a cortisol c- curve so for example scheduling a, a hard workout 9 pm Yeah. that's not surfing on a cortisol curve. Yeah, you have the true. lowest cortisol uh there and then you will just spike it for no reason. Okay. Uh and then this would delay the melatonin secretion, would delay your oh, sleep, yeah, sleep and then yeah. uh disrupt sleep. Okay. And uh, what about the third pillar? So if we mentioned the sleeping and the nutrition's, what do you think about the uh, exercising like how important it is after fixing your nutrition and your sleep yeah absolutely uh, important i, I mean uh, wh- when i started uh, with the whole education journey toward uh, changing my profession from nuclear engineering to uh, let's say performance coaching uh, the first thing i learned mainly from charles poliquin and but other uh, mentors as well is the training that's where the action happen you would not start with sleeping no right, it's, exactly. you start with the yeah. training people right? always ask like uh, i, I want to start exercising without uh, Uh, realizing that they should fix other things first before starting exercising. exactly exactly well uh and training is fun training is where the action happens training is where we build muscle mass where we let's say move the body to adapt and to get stronger and to increase bone density and and and, and you name it yeah. so uh the pillar one is making sure we recover properly before we have the workout yes yeah, yeah. Uh, pillar two is making sure we have the energy to go through the workout and recover from the workout okay. also as well and then pillar three is where the action happens okay okay and i find it always uh, very interesting when i get uh, new clients uh, for me every client is is uh, is like a project uh where i start uh sensing the weak links uh and then coming up with a strategy after we do the health assessment the biosignature uh, and uh, other screenings uh, for health so where we start looking into the strategy what is now the strategy for pillar 1 what is the strategy for pillar 2 what is the strategy for training yeah, yeah. it's like chess game for me yeah, <laughs> yeah. that's nice yeah. and b- basically that's that's your holistic approach that and maybe Correct. like i mean generally that's why you coach holistically correct correct i also uh, talk about we coach people as athletes whatever they are executives or the kids or seniors so uh, it doesn't really matter uh we coach them as athlete because uh, athlete would always use a holistic approach yeah so again there is no point uh working out 100% uh if sleep is compromised it doesn't really matter uh or make much of sense to work out 100% if for example inflammation levels are high gut flora is bad and so on and so forth so we have to uh improve the health markers like insulin sensitivity lowering inflammation levels lowering uh, hba1c uh improving uh the main hormones uh, anabolic hormones like testosterone growth hormone igf1 and so on and so forth and that's the holistic approach so uh again i like to differentiate between personal training and personal coaching okay i don't know if uh, other people use uh, the same term that i use uh, use them personal training for me is physical 
exercises. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so these are reps and sets and so on and so forth. They might be good in terms of program design. They might be less good. Okay, personal coaching for me, it's a holistic coaching. Okay. It's a coaching which includes uh, pillar one and pillar two, the recovery and the nutrition, yeah. and then adds on the right stimulus uh, of resistance training in order to achieve uh, results uh, uh, which are fast, which are uh, healthy, which are uh, sustainable yeah. over time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, that's a holistic approach. That's, uh, that's really amazing. And uh, it's uh, really like, sounds like life, like changing the whole lifestyle, not just only yes. fixing something for, for a short period and then that's it. No, it's Correct. like changing the whole thing. Yeah. Yeah. It's a really amazing approach. Abs absolutely. Maybe last thing I, I like to mention here is the fact that I like to teach uh, the person, the client, why we ask them to do things th a certain way and why we ask them as well to not do uh, them another way. Yeah. So I believe in, in, in even if we are not paid to really like now train and, 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 uh, and educate, but still we think, I think it's a very important uh, element to teach the person why we do things. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And to have this conversation with the client because then they are more likely to commit. Yeah. And for me, when someone hires me, it's all about their results and we would do everything needed in order to help them commit by themselves yeah, true. and understanding the th like what's behind it really helps the clients figuring out what's yeah. like why we are doing that exactly and, yeah it is. exactly yeah. exactly so i don't want them to be dependent on me and always coming to me to, to 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 be coached by myself so i give them the knowledge basically i would say once we achieve the results whatever this are eight weeks 12 weeks 16 weeks whatever the goals might be or where they are start, starting from and the uh, weekly frequency and so on all of this uh, plays a role uh, of course so uh, they are if they are willing to learn and to accumulate the knowledge and to build up upon and to ask the questions, uh, they will be basically, I, I yeah, could hire them yeah, right yeah, away. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, thank you so much for the uh, telling thank us uh, about the 3PP and uh, we would like to know more about it. Maybe in the, our next podcast, which is Big Human Performance Podcast. Uh, and we will see you in the second episode, hopefully. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you.